Hello and welcome to the next video in the MeanStack.js. This video we're going to be talking all about the top 10 things you can do as a developer that's either new to the system or starting to develop more heavily in the system to become better at working with the system. So these are going to be all things from uh, the command line interface tool to the Mongo Express, the how we're framework agnostic to using the SEO to even the user factory. So this will benefit those of you new or having to develop more in it. So play, pay close attention and let's jump on into it. First things first, we got to talk about the command line interface. If you do an npm run CLI, you're about to see what happens. That will turn on the command line interface tool. So this tool is completely customizable and it was custom built for this stack. And it's all in pure JavaScript, so there's really nothing crazy about it, and there's nothing stopping from you, even someone who's a beginning JavaScript guy or gal, to actually develop in it and build whatever things you want out. So there are a ton of great things I want to make sure you note of in here between setting proxies, deleting proxies, the Linux processes, building out specifically a mean stack install or linting and fixing your code, installing other things. Because I know some people have problems with installing Mongo, Node, or Selenium. And at the same time, you can use this to turn all of them on. You can remove module, create modules, lots of great things in here. But we also want to take note and show you that if you come over to the folder system and you come over to the commands folder, you'll see there's the blank templates and there's the actual templates and then there's the command line interface tool and there's the questions we use to build out the command line interface. Everything's in here. Phenomenal stuff to work with and to customize to you and your team or your dev style. So this is ready to go for you. This is awesome. That's number one, the NPM run CLI. Next thing, number two on the list is NPM run lint fix. So we're already here and we could actually do it from inside the command line interface tool, but I'd much rather do it here because it's going to make you quicker as a developer. If you just do a run lint, this will go and check the system and figure out what's wrong with it or what's not in par with the standard. If you do a colon fix, well, now it will actually go fix your problems and fix them for you and then come back and report whether it's done or not or, oh, excuse me, was there anything else it had to do that it couldn't that you now need to do. And if it comes back just like that, then you'll see if it, then you'll see then nothing came back. So we're all good to go. Everything's in up, up to date and up to par. Oh, let me bring that back. Um, <clears throat> so next on the list is NPM run start watch. The best way to turn on the system that we've put in here is NPM. Instead, you could do just an NPM start. NPM, or you could do a, a node index JS. You could do a lot of different things. You could even start the specific server file if you want to. But the best thing we've built out here with starting the system up is NPM start watch. Because what this does is this not only turns live reload on the front end, it will turn NodeMon on to watch the back end. So if you make changes to your API, it will restart the system. So like if we come over here, not in commands, that doesn't count. It had to be somewhere in the server. If we make this change down here and we make a couple lines, come back here, you'll see it's gonna restart server. And at the same time, when we're on this front page, let's actually make sure that it starts back up. There we go. Let's make sure we have a fresh version with live reload. If we come over to the client side code and we come down here and what page are we on? I think we're on the index page actually. If we come to the index view and we now want to put a h1 tag that just says, not hr, h1, and we just say JSON, you'll see this is going to automatically live reload and now my name's in it. So this npm run start watch is going to really help you and you'll see here it just kind of reloaded everything and went to town it's awesome between building changing the api and everything just going so now as you're developing if you're a designer a back-end developer whatever you are we can streamline the process for you which we think is fantastic so that's that let's get into number four and that's seo most people don't even realize it's here 
Oh, but it's here. So we have built out, the system is SEO friendly, but at the same time, you have to come and also do the work to get whatever you want out. So in SEO, I wanna make sure this is known to people because this is actually something that can be pretty useful. So if you want to send through the title or the keywords and description, whatever it might be, you can use the delimiters here, uh, much like EJS, but also it's the same with uh, Lodash can use them or even ES6 could understand these. And you can template out what you want the string to look like. And at the same time, data, the data is, or there's a certain amount of data that gets passed through, but in the specific case of like a view blog, you can add a hook, which our SEO will look for the hook. And then you can add in more data. So in the sense of like this data blog, I added in template blog or template tags just to show people. But at the same time, you can get the module data here and then actually pass it through so that when these get run and configured, you can actually pass through the blog and then actually print it out. So on like a per page basis, if we, I don't actually know if we have any blogs in this one. Oh, we do. So like sustainability, if I drop this down a little bit, this uh, Chrome, you'll see in the title, it says sustainability QA Green Pioneer, which is who wrote the article and sustainability is the title of the article. So there's some, there's a lot to take in there, but I wanna make sure you see it and you know it because it is extremely beneficial to those of you who are in instances or projects that need to care about this stuff. So yes, you can be SEO friendly and we do wanna show you. And there's more we can do, I think we did a video on this already and it's not posted yet, but you'll see more. But I want to make sure in this video we at least take light of it and talk a tiny bit about it. Number five on the list now. UI framework agnostic. Heck yeah. This is one of the ones I love to talk about. So you as a developer, this is where we, a designer, you could be whatever for the job role. You could be project manager and make this decision. It's that easy. So we have a styles folder. And then styles, we have what's been compiled or what's been downloaded in case of like, in sense, font awesome. If you downloaded it, you disregard that for the moment. We have a global variables. We have a global config, which this is basically environment or CDN if we need to pass those to the variables. And then the global style sheet. Now this is where we are agnostic. It is literally, as easy as taking this commented outline, copying it, bring it over here, and this is gonna look terrible, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Hit run, save, and now we're using materialize instead of bootstrap. So, oh look, materialize is now on screen, and it looks, well, you actually not that bad. <laughs> but hey, um, I'm liking it. It's looking pretty good for the fact I wasn't, oh yeah, there's, there's definitely some stuff messed up, but this is what we mean by agnostic. You can come in and just change it. If you have your own company's styles, standards, and they're in SAS, heck, if they're in CSS, you can come import them if you really need to. Granted, you wouldn't do it through SAS like this. You'd do it other ways. But regardless, you can come in and import whatever. If you want to run foundation, you can run foundation. You want to run bootstrap 4, run bootstrap 4. We don't care. It's, it's easy. The system will build out the SAS for you, or if it's less, or if it's CSS or whatever it might be, it'll build it out for you. So you see, I'll, I'll change this right back. Actually, I'll just undo, undo, save. And next thing you know, boom, we're right back to bootstrap, which takes me back to all the way to point number three, which is, was the NPM run start watch with a little live reload. Stuff's awesome. That's number five. All right, number six. Uh, this will bring us back in here. We wanna make sure that you guys know about environments. In the configs folder, there's dev, nightwatch, nightwatch is specifically for testing, production, and test. And then uh, each one of these, you can add in whatever you want, and this will hold precedence over the basics, or the setting, or the default setting, which are generally in settings. Um, so these are the default. Anything you put in here will override those which is what we want, you know, we want to have overriding the title, we want to override the ports, we want to, we want to have different configurations for different environments. 
very, very important for down the road, especially if this project you're working on with this is going production or you're doing something more with it than just developing it. So that's number six. Number seven, NPM test. Most people don't realize how easy this can really be for you. So we actually already have another uh, window open and all we gotta do over here is run npm run CLI and we use this because this is I found the easiest way for people because I work on three or four different machines and they all have some of them have a good time installing Selenium server some of them don't you can easily just run this install it through the command line interface tool scrolling up to hit start Selenium server and boom this tab is now running a Selenium server you can come easily over here Oh look, there was a small error. We'll deal with that later. But you can come over here now and just run npm test. Now say the reason I say you had to turn on Selenium servers is because Karma and Mocha handle their own stuff. They're good to go. But uh, the Nightwatch tests actually need to run against uh, a Selenium server because they're end-to-end -end test cases. So what you're seeing going on is first was the Mocha ran some tests against the API, then Karma ran some tests against the client uh, with the client code. And then we have the end-to-end -end test cases running off to the side and they're gonna go rather quickly. But this is number seven because I want you guys to see this. I want you to see that we already have 150 test cases already written for you. You can fully test this entire system every which way to Sunday. And this is phenomenal, especially if you're in an enterprise. Like, this is what they're gonna wanna see. They're gonna wanna see, did you run, especially when you go to like a uh, review management meeting, they're gonna wanna see that you did your homework, that you have your test cases, especially the way everything's running, everyone's trying to go agile, everyone's trying to be automated. We're here for you. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna cut this out for now because I don't need to uh, continue to show you guys because there's, well, you can go look at Travis to see how the tests run. Um, so let's turn this back on. And let's talk about number eight. Another great way to use this for development that most people don't even know we have, that we try to promote and market a bunch. It doesn't always work. Oh well, we'll talk about it now. If you go to localhost, port 8081, we have integrated with Mongo Express. Now this is, normally you have to type in admin and password, or pass for the password, admin for username, pass for the password to get in here, but it looks like it has my session saved, which is great. But this is freaking awesome to develop with. You don't know how many times I used to have to download those crappy clients that were just terrible on my Windows machine or like, and I'm not saying, I don't wanna drop any names because they're not bad, they did the job, they still do kinda. But this Mongo Express can hook into Whatever configuration you're on, whether you're dev, production, whatever it is, generally, generally we don't actually run this in production. We only run it in dev. But you could hook it up to production if you really want to. You can come in here, check out your database, come into your logs, do whatever, update, test, blah, 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 save, boom. Oh, you want to actually delete that now we just changed? Yeah, delete that. Easy as pie. And this is a problem that I know a lot of people experience. So remember, localhost 80, port 8081. Super great, super easy stuff, really fantastic to use while developing. Gonna make you a hell of a lot better. Uh, number nine now, routes. And specifically I wanna point out routes. Uh, every route, and I'm just gonna pull out one of them, they all have it. Every route, when it gets called, gets passed in the entire application of the Express app, what's already been put on it, the authentication, which is really all of our middleware, our mailing provider, all of the system settings, all modules, or models, not modules, models, if you want access to them easily without having to, you know, set up Mongoose model, scheme, do all that fun stuff to get a hold of it, and logger. So you have access to all the core stuff that not everyone always realizes. Um, and this stuff is widely used in all controllers and called, and you can easily get it and call it and pass it to the send function. Now, currently in this example, we don't, but if you were to look down in the system controller, actually the system routes, you can see you can set up a, a function to just set it up instantly, take in the variables 
and send a function back and set yourself up to have the variables in there ready to rock and roll. So I just want to point out in this number nine, all the info you really have with routes and your API already has that you can use like emailing. Great. Like, you don't know how many times people go, well, how do you soup an email? Well, it's already integrated in the system and all you have to do is put in a couple configurations like, oh, your keys and stuff. And next thing you know is you have an emailer and it's super easy to use. So that's number nine. Lastly, number 10, front end users. Everyone always asks, once they start using the system again, well, how do I always know who's logged in? Pretty straightforward, user factory. You'll see it's passed around everywhere, absolutely everywhere, because it, it maintains the user state in the front end with Angular. And so if you come in here in the user factory, you'll see the user class, and it's got everything from how we can get authenticated to reuse this function to how we actually edit the profile, how we log in, how what we do on identity, on ID, sign up, forget, password, check logged out. We got some awesome functions in here that you're gonna see everywhere all around when we do resolves on uh, routes. Like, let's see if one of these have it. Oh, right here, user factory check logged out, or maybe one down here is check logged in. Those all derive right from down here in the bottom. They're all prototypes. And you see check logged in, it's just going to check to see if you're still authenticated system and then it's going to check to make sure that you're not, if you're checking the logged in, that you're, that this is not false or if it is, do that. But this is where that lives and that's something I want to point out because a lot of people have that question, but this is an important key piece to the stack to help you become better at developing and working with it. So in summary, Running the command line interface tool, customizing it to your team is a fantastic idea. Using npm run lint fix is even better to make your code adapt to the standard we have chosen if you want to use it. You do not have to do it. But we found it very beneficial because it's a simple command, no configurations, no settings, boom, ready to go. Uh, we also thoroughly stand behind npm run start watch with the live reload and the node mon. It makes life so easy. SEO is another great thing that you know you, you just need to know about and see because once you see it, it can do a lot for you. Framework agnostic, oh my God, do we love that. That is so nice to have because we know a lot of other systems are locked in, you know, locked in. We're, we're customizable for you, we're ready to go. Any in enterprise, any environment, any open source company, whatever, we're ready for you on that. Number six, as you guys remember, we're environments pay close attention to them. There's lots of cool stuff in there for you guys to use based off environments. You can even use their scripts in the package JSON if you want to run specifically each environment. NPM run, start, colon, production, test, dev, whatever. Um, the last couple ones, you know, the routes, the emails, the user factory, but the last one I want to end on, even though it was only number eight, was the Mongo Express. It can be a lifesaver. This this little guy right here can be an awesome lifesaver while developing because sometimes you just want to come in here and just say hey, new document and create something and boom, put it in easy. So easy that it can speed you up like that. I don't even know if you guys could hear the snap, but it it's fantastic. Those are my top 10 things for the stack right now for uh, MeanStack.js. I'm sure these will be ever-changing, but please, by all means, subscribe, comment, submit a github issue whatever it is check it out let us know um we're we know we can make you a better developer we know we can make you a fast developer in the system we know we can give you so many options you might not know what to do with them so at the same time we want to help you figure out what to do with all of them hopefully this video helps at the same time uh hopefully it asks you to ask questions you know get involved check everything out let us know how it goes and we'll talk soon have a great day.